I guess we're going to start in Manchester, England. Gogi, how do you like that? Uh, the MEN Arena in Manchester, England. And it's going to be broadcast on Showtime. Your main event of the evening is going to be Anthony Joshua, the current IBF heavyweight champion. And he's going to be defending his title as well as his undefeated record against Eric Molina, a gentleman that you're very familiar with from South Texas, and a gentleman who's coming off of a very, very big victory uh, in which he defeated um, former light heavyweight, former cruiserweight champion as well, um, Tomas Adamek. He did that back in April of this year, but hasn't fought since. Gogi, do we even have to rattle off the tell the tape and even do the strengths and weaknesses of both fighters, our customary breakdown of this fight? Or what is everything? You can pretty much sum up everything we need to know about this in just a few sentences, can't you? Oh, without a doubt, you know. You know, Molina, he, Eric, he did great against that guy, uh, Adamek, okay? He surprised him over there. You know, I think he was down on the scorecards, and out of nowhere, the big left hook right hand caught Adamek right on the button and everything, you know? And Eric does, you know, like I said, Eric can punch with that right hand. He can hurt you with that right hand and everything. So anytime you, you know, uh, you're a puncher, especially in the heavyweight division, uh, you know, you always have a chance, but it's going to be a small chance when he uh, fights a guy like Anthony Joshua uh, in his backyard. Uh, you know, just the physical, athletic gifts of Joshua, you know, size, range, uh, speed, uh, explosiveness, you know, stuff like that. He has such a big advantage over Eric and everything. So uh, Eric's pretty much going to have to get lucky and land that big, uh, you know, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa right hand, you know, uh, uh, out of the park <laughs> to win this one because uh, I just can't see it as the fight goes on, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Probably, you know, there's a good chance it might not go past two or three rounds. You know, if Eric gets hit by the right hand, uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to recover like he did with the uh, Deontay Wilder fight, fight because this guy's right hand is explosive, man. And it's, and it's, he doesn't telegraph it. Uh, he doesn't, you know, uh, wing it, uh, you know, crazy like Deontay Wilder is straight as an arrow, and it gets to his point real fast. Like they say, Joe, the fastest point, the fastest. Uh, the fastest uh, way to get from point A to point B is a straight line, and that's how his right hand is mm. straight as an arrow. Whap! And when he hits you, oof, you know what I mean? Uh, he'll hurt you and everything. So uh, I said Eric, Eric's got a big, uh, what do you call it, very, very, very big obstacle to overcome over there. Well, Gogi, obviously you look at some of the mild success Eric Molina had against Deontay Wilder. Do you see him being able to take – Anthony Joshua equally as deep into the scheduled 12 round fight. And do you see him being able to actually hurt Anthony Joshua just as he did in kind of staggering Deontay Wilder, the third round of their, their fight, which took place last year. Do you, do you see him having that same amount of success against Anthony Joshua? If he can hit Joshua, yeah, he can hurt him. Cause uh, he, you know, like I said, Eric's a big puncher with that right hand. Uh, if he hits him right, if he hits him right, yeah, he can hurt him and get his attention. Uh, like I said, Joe, when you got a guy like uh, Molina who can hit, and this is a sport that you get hit in, and a big puncher like Eric, yeah, he could, he can hurt you at any time, just like he did Adamic. All right. Well, objectivity and political correctness aside, Gogi, do you see him actually doing that this this Saturday night? Well, you know, Joe. Since he trained, you know, he's changed trainers for this fight, okay? Uh, the guy that, you know, has trained him the last few fights and he was looking good, a guy named Robert Norris, uh, you know, you know how fighters are. Uh, man, I'm going to be upfront. You know, I've seen this all the time. You know, every time fighters get ready for a fight, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they have a trainer that's there with them uh, from the beginning who's sacrificing uh, like them, and they're not making no damn money. Then all of a sudden they get ready for a big fight, uh, and they don't want to pay the trainer, you know, uh, the 10% or what they, what they want. And so what do they do? They get rid of them. You know why? To save money. Okay. And to me, you know, Robert has done a, 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 you know, a very good job with Eric, you know, you know, not only, uh, you know, he's also served as a sparring partner too, Joe, believe it or not. He's a coach that spars with Eric because there's not a lot of sparring over here. And he does, you know, great mid work with Eric to get his, you know, punches and uh, timing and rhythm and the sharpness on uh, his combinations going. 
and to get his reflexes sharp. Because Robert, you know, uh, he's a physical coach. When he, uh, you know, you know, he, you know, if he sees a mistake, he'll hit you back, and you know, he'll, he'll see your mistakes and hit you back. Uh, and you know, a coach like that, you know, it only gets your, you know, defense sharper. So you know, he, you know, Eric left him and everything, and uh, and uh, you know, he's pretty much calling the shots. What he's doing right now, con- you know, concentrating on a lot of strength and conditioning, uh, and uh, and not, you know, really. Uh, to me, what wins fights, Joe, is boxing, the boxing workouts. Okay, the skill work, the conditioning in the gym, that other stuff, that strength and conditioning stuff, jumping up and down boxes and all that crap. No, nah, that's good <laughs> when you're getting ready for a fight. Uh, when you're not getting ready for a fight, stay in shape to get stronger, more explosive and all that. But when you're getting ready for a fight, you only got so much gas in your tank, and you can't be concentrating on that crap, okay, uh, when, you're, when you're getting ready for a fight, okay? Because uh, if, if you concentrate on more strength conditioning than, than the boxing skill conditioning workouts in the gym, well, guess what? Uh, you're not going to, you know, be totally committed uh, to what really wins fights, okay? Because, you know, I've seen a lot of guys, they do a lot of that strength and conditioning stuff, but when they go to the gym, they don't, you know, for the real workouts that's going to win your fights, it doesn't, you know, they're dead tired, they're, you know, uh, they're exhausted. They don't have the strength or, 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 that, or the, what do you call it, or that energy to, to do the real workouts, the boxing workouts in the gym that's going to win your fights, okay? And that's where I see a lot of these strength conditioning coaches nowadays, they don't understand that. Uh, one guy that really understands the good is Ed Jackson, you know, uh, uh, my boy, uh, who, you know, works with Ward. He worked with Diego Corrales and uh, Iris Landilar and all these, uh, a lot of other good fighters. He understands uh, that boxing workouts in the gym are have priority over the strength and conditioning workouts, okay? But Eric, I heard he's done a lot of the strength and conditioning workouts over here and uh, focus less on the, you know, the, you know, the sparring and the good mitt work that Robert was uh, giving him and everything, so... Yeah, you know, Joe, all this little stuff right here, man, all 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 this stuff right there, not little stuff. To me, it's big stuff. You know, it's going to hurt him in the fight. And having a guy like Robert, you know, who's took him uh, and helped him out and uh, developed him, uh, you know, the last few fights and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, he's getting a big fight of his career and didn't want to pay him. I see that all the time, Joe, man. Eric ain't the first one to do it. I, man, I have countless fighters that. Uh, well, we, we saw it. Well, go we saw it. Fighters. Too. Well, Gogi, we saw it in 2015 when James Kirkland, well, ditched Ann Wolf, well, that too. Um, uh, uh, temporarily, and um, and hired Rick Maronis Jr. <laughs> yeah, I see, Joe. I see, that I've was that was it. money. That was for money, Gogi. Joe, I've seen it. I've been seeing it since I've been in boxing. It's just that's one of the realities in boxing that never changes. Okay, it, it always happens, man. When fighters start getting the big payday, okay. They want, it's, happened, it's happened to me in the past. I don't want to mention the name of the fighters, man. You know that done that. You know when they make a big payday, uh, you know they, uh, you know they don't want to give me a, you know they don't want to give me my fair share of the pie, and they want to cut my pay. So yeah, man. You know, but the thing is, it's karma. You know, you know karma, man. You know <laughs> that's what happens. You know, karma. You know what happens with karma. <laughs> and and mm-hmm. that's why I said, you know, going in the fight, you know, Erica. Yeah, I don't know who. Uh, you know when Robert left him i don't know who's taking over right uh i don't know who's you know the chief the chief seconds or whatever and everything but ah like i said eric man you know he's his own man grown man and uh you know he still got that right hand that's what's keeping him in the fight if he didn't have this right hand oh my god it would be a the mismatch of the century but he since he you know he can get your respect if he hits you with that right hand uh you know what i mean joe he does uh he does. He's like North Korea. Okay, they got that nuclear bomb. <laughs> they got leverage. Okay, all right. But they ain't got much. They ain't got much else. Okay, so that's pretty much what Eric brings to the table. Well, he's twenty-five and three with nineteen knockouts. He's six foot four, fights behind a seventy-nine inch reach. He's thirty-four years of age, and he's coming off of two consecutive victories. Uh, his last defeat was in June of 2015 when he got stopped by Deontay Wilder. Mm-hmm. No shame in that. Deontay knocks out pretty much everybody mm-hmm. uh, who isn't named Berman Stiverns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's one thing that uh, in <laughs> – and, yeah, here's one thing uh, of note. Like, like, like I stated earlier in the program, he heard Deontay Wilder in the third round, and also he took him to the ninth. That's not bad for a guy of Eric Molina's stature. 
Mm-hmm. Um, do you see it now? Let's let's cut to the chase. Here's your here's time for Gogi's final prediction and how you see the fight see the fight playing out. Do you see it actually going as long as well the Deontay Wilder fight? Hmm. You know, Eric, he's going to be defensive. Okay, when you when you're defensive and cautious, and you're you know and you're moving around the ring and you're looking for that big right hand, you know it's going to extend some rounds. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean, Joe? Uh, when yeah. You, you, if, when you play that survival mode, it extends the rounds. But if he gets caught right early, the fight ain't going to go two or three rounds. But if if he fights real uh, cautious and defensive. And moves around the ring and gives, you know, makes it difficult for Joshua to hit him flush. Then it's going to go rounds. The fight might be ugly, but it's going to go rounds. But Joshua's the kind of guy. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a physical. Not only is he a physical, athletic beast, but he's aggressive and and and, and attack oriented. He's going to go right after him, right off the bat. Okay, not crazy or anything, but you know, with good skill, footwork, that good jab. And, you know, he's, he's going to let that right hand go. That's one thing I noticed about Joshua, Joe. He ain't safety first. That's what I'm trying to say. He ain't cautious. He ain't going to fight cautious like Eric. He's going to let it, you know, he's going to, of course, he's going to be aware of Eric's big right hand, but he's going to let his right hand go right off the bat and everything. You know what I mean? And he's going to use that jab to set up everything. That's going to be you know, the key. If I always said that in the past, Joe. If Joshua learned how to use his jab proficiently, if he only understand, if he only understood the value of that left jab and, how it can control your opponent, you know, uh, you know, from range and distance, and how it can set up your other uh, combinations uh, in your repertoire, and how it can set up that big right hand, and how it can make the fight so much easy. God, Lee, he's going to be, huh, he's going to be a force to reckon with. Right now, he's just, he's only been boxing a few years, you know what I mean, Joe? He's green. He's only been boxing like seven years. He's still green uh, as far as his boxing IQ. You know, he talks intelligent like he knows boxing and this and that, but. Uh, he just, you know, you know, that's to me, that's just book, you know, that's just like a, a lawyer coming out of grad, I mean, a, a new lawyer coming out of, a, you know, law school who doesn't have the experience in the real world on how, you know, things work and everything, I really work, okay? And that's what Joshua is. You know, he studies the game a lot, he's intelligent, he lots, probably watches a lot of fights on YouTube and all that, but that's, that's just book knowledge. He doesn't have that real experience in real fights, okay? He hasn't been in the game long enough, okay, Joe? Uh, so, like I said, uh, but once he starts learning uh, and uh, uh, you know the intricacies of the sport, and that's using his jab with the feints and everything. Oh, geez, he's gonna be a hell of a hell of a, hell of a heavyweight. But it, he's gonna start fast. I know, I know, Joshua man, he's that aggressive, physically minded guy, and he's gonna press the issue, uh, issue with Eric. Okay, he ain't gonna wait back like Deontay Wilder. Okay, uh, he, he's gonna press the action and everything, and, and he's also gonna be aware of his right hand and everything, uh, Eric's right hand. So. I, I, you know, like I said, he's his trainer is, uh, you know, Robert McCracken, the guy that, uh, the former number one ranked uh, WBC middleweight uh, contender, and also the coach of the Olympic team, uh, the, uh, the Great Britain's Olympic team, uh, you know. So he's gonna have him ready. Him and Tony Sims, him and Tony Sims, uh, you know, his manager. So, yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, you know, if you start fast for Eric, it might not, la- it might not last long because this boy can hit. Yeah, well, right now as it stands, Anthony Joshua uh, at the, well, tender age of 27 is already the IBF heavyweight title holder. He's 17-0 with 17 knockouts, has an absolutely perfect record. So, uh, Gogi, your final prediction, what do you think? Give me the round two, brother, if you're predicting a knockout. Me, Joe, under four. Under four rounds, especially if what's his name presses the issue. If he just kicks back and waits, because Eric's going to fight defensive. He's going to fight off his – he's going to be moving around the ring, you know, fighting off what you call your back foot, you know, working that jab, you know, waiting to counter off, off uh, Joshua's mistakes, you know, to try to land that, you know, counter right hand or that or their uppercut and stuff like that and everything. So he's going to be moving around the ring. He's going to be very, very uh, attentive. Uh, you ain't going to see Eric lead a lot, I guarantee you that. If he does, he's going to get caught. So uh, you're going to see him, you know, just like when he fought Adam, like, move, use the ring a lot, move around the ring. and But, you know, like I said, uh, Joshua, you know, you know, you know, he'll, you know he's an aggressive-minded uh, heavyweight, man. I like That's what I like about that guy. He's got the mentality of a smaller weight division fighter, you know, that he ain't scared to put his damn combinations together, okay? And I really believe he's going to, you know, uh, walk him down and uh, 
And, you know, if he hits him, like I said, when he hits him, he ain't going to be like Walder. Uh, you know, uh, he, uh, this guy has a different type of right hand than Walder, man. This, this guy is, you know, Walder is it's like long and stinging and explosive. This guy is like a, like a bazooka, heavy-handed, you know what I mean? Boom. And when he hits you, you know, he, break, you know, he, uh, he, he brings down tall buildings. And that's the type of the right hand uh, that Joshua has. Just explosive, Joe. Straight as an arrow. It ain't like Wilder, man, where he cocks it, you know, where he cocks his right hand back and he's telling the world, you know, uh, he's telling Putkin, Putkin, oh, man, my right hand is coming, okay? Here it, here it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. this guy, he throws it straight as an arrow right from his chin. Whack! Like Tito Trinidad. Remember him? Joe, his right hand straight as an of course. arrow. Whack! Yep. You don't see it, Joe. Like I said, the fastest... Uh, the fastest uh, way to get from point A to point B is a straight line, and that's how straight his uh, right hand is, straight as an arrow, wham, and he just turns it over. And if you press the action and get to that distance right on his right hand, Joe, it's going to end in one. But it's just, as soon as he lands that right hand, Joe, that's going to be the key. Okay. But me too, Joe. Uh, Eric, uh, you know, he's got to be more assertive, man. He just can't kick back and wait and uh, – uh, and try to counter, man. That's you know. What if Joshua takes that, that away? He ain't gonna have. If you don't have no Plan B, hey, Plan B is hey, man. You got to be on the offensive too. Let your, you know, Larry, uh, Eric's pretty damn athletic himself too. Okay, he got to you know he got to get his jab going. Okay, he can't sk- he can't be scared to get countered with that right hand over that uh over that jab. He's got to get his jab going. He's got to be physical and assertive with that jab. He's got to let that you know that left hook right hand go. To me, that's his best combination of, of hurting somebody. The left, left, you know, the left hook, right hand, and he's got to let his, you know, he's got to let his hands go too. You know, he just can't be, uh, you know, uh, playing it safe and waiting to land that damn right hand. And Joshua knows that; he'll see it. So he's got to let his, he's got to bring something else to the table, Joe, and that's being assertive and physical too. So what if he gets hit? Okay, all right. I mean, so what if he gets? I mean, he doesn't want to get hit, but you know, so what? Quit, quit letting fear, you know, because when you're, when you're tentative, Joe, when you're fighting the guys and you're tentative of the guy, that's, that means you got fear in you. You know what I mean? Oh, man, I don't want to get hit by that right hand. Hey, man, don't get in that damn ring. You know what I mean, Joe? If you're going to be tentative of, of the guy and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, you know, let your hands go, what the hell are you doing in that damn ring? Let your damn hands go. And that's what he's got to do is change his mentality. And, uh, you know, because Eric can punch too. Eric got some athleticism when he lets his punches go. But, you know, is he going to do it over there in that big crowd of 21,000 or whatever, sold-out arena, uh, screaming, rabid, uh, you know, pound for pound, the uh, best fans in the world in, in, U- in the U.K.? So, you know, that could make a difference in the fight too, Joe, is his mentality going into the fight. Is he going to be safety first and play it safe, or is he going to do both? You know, uh, you know, like Lomachenko, he knows when to put his foot on the pedal when he has to, and that's what Eric's going to have to do, okay? All right? But like I said, this Joshua guy, boy, he ain't scared to, man. He he knows when to take his foot off the pedal, but he likes to mix it up, Joe. He's that physically, he's got that physically aggressive uh, mentality. I like, he's got that little, he's got that mentality of a little guy. Uh, remember that fight with Dylan White? Oh, boy, they were exchanging. He, you know, he got hurt in that fight. Okay, he recovered, but, you know, you didn't see that. You didn't see, you didn't see, you didn't see that, uh, you didn't see that. When he got hit by that right hand, Joe, you didn't see him turn into a safety first fighter. As soon as he cleared his head, what did he, Joe? What did he do, do Joe? He went back on the attack. And one thing uh, Joshua does real good, he attacks a body good too for heavyweight. Like I said, Joe, he puts his combinations together like a little guy, like a little Marco Antonio Barrera. He attacks the body too, both sides. So you know all, all this stuff, Joe, going in. You know, you know if he has a problem hitting Eric with the right hand, I will say. Hit that jab, you know, set up that, you know, set everything up with that jab. You can't hit him in the head, hit him in that chest, that stomach, you know, just to hit, just to hit something to get that distance right. Then, you know, hey, uh, then hit that body first, okay? Then the head, then they'll set up the uh, punches to the head because if Eric's defensive and he's expecting that right hand, he's taking that right hand away, then, hey, you got to hit other parts of his body to open up that right hand. And to me, Joshua, you know, he throws good body punches in there. And that, you know, uh, to me, you know, that'll set up that big right hand. Very good. So James Gogi predicts uh, it 
well, being a stoppage victory for Anthony Joshua in four rounds or less. Uh, Gogi and the co-main event of that fight card, and obviously there are a lot of names. This is actually a stacked fight card for this late in the year. And once again, Eddie Hearn just wants to keep his guys busy. Uh, certain uh, names on this card, right? Callum Smith, uh, who is uh, uh, Liam Smith's older brother. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Liam Smith's bigger brother, who competes at 168. Uh, he's going to be taking on Luke Blackledge. Scott Quigg is making his comeback to the ring since breaking his jaw against Carl Frampton. He's going to be fighting Jose Cayetano. Also, and this is one I need to point out to you, Gogi, Luis Ortiz mm. taking on David Allen, who's only mm. had 10 professional fights. What is, what is that? Why on earth, one, with the BBBFC, right, why would they actually sanction that fight? And why would Eddie Hearn put his man, who's 26 and 0 with 22 knockouts, and he's the interim WBC or the the regular WBA heavyweight champion, against a guy who I'm sorry has 11 professional fights. He has a record of nine one and one, Mr. David Allen. I'm why would he do that, Dougie? I never seen a guy fight, but the BB, BBC is pretty tough. So the guy is pretty must be pretty durable and tough. Another thing, Eddie wants to keep this guy busy, man. Like I said, Joe, a fighter's best friend in boxing is besides that paycheck is activity. Okay, you got to stay active. And Luis Ortiz, because of uh, his uh, past problems with his other promoter, you know, he was you know he was on the shelf for a while with Golden Boy. So. They brought mm-hmm. him back. He didn't look good against Malik Scott. So, Joe, I always say, man, James Tony, man, if you're willing to work with the promoters and work within their budgets, okay, you can stay active. You can stay busy. You can keep your your, your tools sharp, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, not only your tools sharp, but your conditioning, you know, especially heavyweights. If you don't fight between fights, oh, my God. Oh, I know that for a fact. You know, they'll go up 40, 50 pounds, okay? <laughs> All right? Because, you know, mm-hmm. heavyweights are, what do you call it, natural lazy sloths, Joe. Okay? <laughs> just, all right? All right? But if you keep a guy busy between fights and uh, he's always in the gym training, his weight's always down. But the main thing, that that's important, Joe. That's very, very important, okay? But the main thing is just keeping him active, man. And uh, and I always said, man, these damn fighters nowadays, oh, man, I'm not going to fight for that. But, dang, man, you, uh, there's nothing like activity. James Tony used to do that all the time. Uh, you know, between title defenses in the 90s, he used to go back on ESPN to fight for 25 grand just to stay sharp. You know what I mean? Just to keep his mm. tools sharp, okay? And I think it was a great idea for Lewis, Lewis Ortiz and Eddie Hearns to do that, to keep this guy active. You know, of course, he's not going to get the big bucks, uh, and, a, and, a, and, and he ain't going to fight, you know, uh, HBO-type uh, level opponent, but the thing is, he's going to get in front of that damn big crowd, Joe. He's going to get, you know, what do you mean? People in England are going to uh, finally see him fight. They heard about him, this big Cuban uh, 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 explosive southpaw, okay? Now they get to see him fight. So it's a win-win situation, Joe. Uh, he, uh, you know, the fans of England get to see him live. Uh, you know, the fan base out there, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they're going to start calling for that fight for him and Joshua, you know, next year and everything. You know, like, you said, like I said, Joe, when you, you want to build a super fight, Eddie's smart. You, it's, you put both guys on the same card and, and, and put it in the oven and let it bake. Okay, so it's a win-win situation. That guy he's fighting, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's just going to be, a, you know, a, a punching bag for how long it lasts. And, but, you know, Luis Ortiz, Eddie's going to, you know, number one, he's going he's gonna to start, uh, you know, the drums are going to start beating loud for this fight next year. The fans of England... Uh, you know, get to see this guy, especially if he, if he looks explosive, Joe, and he looks spectacular. Oh, man, they could have that fight in Wembley next year, you know, 50, 60,000. You know what I mean, Joe? So, uh, well, yeah, so, so, yeah, the white rhino, David Allen, is definitely not a defensive-minded fighter. He's not a guy who's going to be trying to run away from Luis Ortiz. He's going to be sitting in the pocket, trying to work behind his jabs. He'll create several openings for Luis Ortiz. Guys, and I don't see this one going past three or four rounds. Mm. 
So that's that's a, a huge reason why. They, because, you know, you stated in his last fight against Malik Scott, that was just, it was just a month ago on uh, November 12th. Yeah, he got a lot of criticism for not taking out a guy like Malik Scott. But as you stated before, when you were addressing, talking about Joshua versus Molina, you stated, well, when a guy is trying to survive and he's a world-class fighter, boy, it's not all that easy to get him out of there. Like Malik Scott. Like Malik Scott. So, mm-hmm. guys, so look forward to Luis Ortiz's big UK debut mm-hmm. uh, on Saturday night at the at the MEN Arena. Now, there's something I do have to address before we actually move on to the other events, Gogi. Uh, also, <laughs> in the co-made event, what's been picking up a lot of steam is Dylan White versus Derek Chisora. Mm. Scheduled for 12 rounds for White's British heavyweight title. And this is now, Gogi, a WBC title eliminator. Technically, the winner of this fight takes on the winner of either Deontay Wilder or the winner of Berman Stivern, Alexander Povetkin. Mm. Uh, there have been a lot of media attention in, of this matchup lately, in a large part due to Derek Chisora. Um, Gogi? Why on earth is he acting like a, a complete lunatic? And this is nothing new for Derek Chisora. Is this just more of the same? Is he trying to just bring attention to his, well, uh, flailing career, I guess? <laughs> uh, Derek Chisora is uh, you know, kind of loose screws in the head. Man, that's the way he always did. He's on that flat pitch, though, don't forget. Okay, uh, Vitaly, I think. So he's got. Yep, that was he's Vitaly. Got some <laughs> he spit he's water in Vladimir's head, face Joe. as well. <laughs> yeah, he's got loose screws in the head, Joe. And uh, yeah, like I said, this guy, you know, these guys are you know second tier heavyweights. You know, they'll never be heavyweight. I mean, the probabilities of them being heavyweight champion of the world are you know real low. And uh, and it's just it's good, man. You know what? I got to commend Eddie for putting this fight on. It's going to be a good little scrap, uh, a local rivalry, as, as you would call it, which is great. You know, I, well, you know, we, you know, Russell Peltz. You know, back in the days, he had great rivalries in Philadelphia, you know, uh, where local fighters who didn't like each other from different parts of the town, they wanted to be the king of Philly, okay? Uh, uh, our good friend of the show, Don Chargan, war week, and when he was a promoter, when he was promoting over there in L.A. at the Olympics, he had a lot of rivalry fights over there uh, between locals, like Danny Little, Red Lopez, Bobby Chacon. They did like 17,000 fans. And Don said if he would have, if they would have listened to him and uh, been patient and let it, you know, let it, uh, you know, uh, bake in the oven a little longer. They would have did forty thousand at the uh, at the Coliseum. You know what I mean? But you know that, that that's why it's good. You know when uh, you know Eric Molina uh, Joshua fight. I don't think it's gonna be. Uh, I don't think that's gonna give the fans worth their, their money's worth. But you know the the guys on the undercard like uh, that. What's that guy Ortiz? Okay, uh, they want to see that guy. Is that guy gonna be a threat for Joshua? And if he looks, if yeah, he looks really like- out there. Yeah, yeah, all the names, all the names that I mentioned as well. But, yeah, especially the heavyweights. That's what this card is all about, Gogi. Um, so here's, here's the million-dollar question. One, does Chisora, at age 32, and, and you know, he's younger hey, than Andre I'm gonna, Ward, I'm but... Gonna, I'm going to put it I'm gonna put it up quick. These guys ain't going nowhere, okay? They're not going to have a chance. You know, the winner of this might fight for the heavyweight title, but these guys, are, you know, they'll just be an opponent. For uh, Deontay Wilder, uh, Berman, uh, or Berman, Berman Stiverns, whoever wins that belt. I mean, these guys just, I mean, they're tough. They're, no, there's levels to this, okay? They're good regional fighters, that's all. Uh, the fight on the world, uh, the fight on the world stage and, uh, and win and be successful. Well, Chisora had, you know, you know, he had his chance and blew it. Every time he stepped up to the plate, he lost, okay? But, you know, it's uh, he. You know, he's a guy that you know. He, you know, I give him credit. You know, he's a guy. He might not be blessed with the size and athleticism of Joshua, but he's got a heart. He's got. He's got a. He's a fighter. Okay, but but the thing is, and Joe, in this business, just like in the NFL, talent's going di- to dictate your ceiling, and you know, you know, his talent doesn't dictate. That he's going to be heavyweight champion of the world unless he gets a lucky punch in there like Asim Rockman did. Well, see, and that's that's the shame of this because conceivably, I could see Dylan White defeating either one of these two gentlemen yeah. who are actually hold on who are actually going to be competing 
for a portion of the heavyweight crown in Australia. Gogi, what? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Parker yeah. versus Andy Ruiz Jr. Going to be competing for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World, right? I'm sorry, in Auckland, New Zealand. My apologies. And guys, this is going to be broadcast actually on HBO. I can see Dylan White conceivably beating either one of these guys. Um, why is this happening for the WBA Heavyweight Championship, Gogi. Yeah, it's politics, man. Uh, their promoters p- position them. <laughs> okay, there are people behind. I'm them sorry. Position. This is going to be. I'm sorry. My apologies, Gogi. It's going to be for the vacant WBO Heavyweight Championship. Oh, like the I vacant said, Joe, WBO Heavyweight Championship. My goodness. It don't matter. It don't matter what belt. It's just the promoters position them. Okay, to get to get in this position. Okay, Aram. Since he signed uh, Parker this week, he controls both. So. Aaron will be back in the heavyweight business. You know, okay, he knows uh, that you know it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good business. It's going to be a hot division, you know, with uh, Wilder, Luis Ortiz, and Joshua. So you know, if he gets that piece of the heavyweight division, he can make some money. So that's why Joe, and uh, that's why Joe, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Aaron's back in the heavyweight division and everything. Okay, <laughs> because uh, and it, it, it's creating some buzz because of Anthony Joshua. And uh, a little bit of Deontay Wilder, not so much Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. He's creating the buzz in the in the heavyweight division again. So, Gogi, who wins this fight, and why? Which one? Uh, the Parker. Parker versus Andy Ruiz Jr. Sir. Man, Ruiz is going into the guy's backyard, Joe. Come on now. Uh, one of the judges is Robert Hoyle. <laughs> that's the that's the judge yeah. you hire when. Uh, in house, okay, to make the structure <laughs> guy. Come on, Joe. Come on, man. It's the right. You know what I mean. That's the judge yeah. you hire when you uh, when you want to protect your guy in house. He's a good in in house judge. I call him. He protects well, your investment. Yeah, and top rank, and and it's no shocker to me that that Bob Arum actually signed Joseph Parker, right? Um, the, <laughs> You know, he he, I, he doesn't exactly have a ton of confidence in Andy Ruiz Jr., who's, who's become famous now for pulling out of fights and uh, turning down offers. So, and the guy I mean, how... disgusting, Joe. The guy looks disgusting is, you know, uh, the, the, the Mexican Pil, Pil, Pillsbury Doughboy, okay? You know, he's got talent <laughs> and ability, Joe. But you can see he doesn't have that dedication and, and discipline to be a professional fighter the way he no. does. How, how you know how fat and sloppy he looks? Okay, so no, no, yeah. even like that, and and the way he pulls out of fights. Yeah, this is mm. so. This is pretty much it. This is the end of the road. Where it is where Top Rank is concerned, as yeah. far as they're concerned, where where concerning Andy Ruiz Jr.'s career, right? This is it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. think about how long they've had him had him under contract. How long they've been pumping money into this guy. How long they've been trying to cultivate his career? It, it's yeah. been at least six years, Gogi. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's now or never, guys, from Auckland, New Zealand, on HBO. So going back to the Jazor Dylan White, who wins that fight? I think I have an idea of what you're going to say, but let's hear it, Gogi. Who wins, Derek Chisora versus Dylan White at the MEN Arena in Manchester, England? Joe, honestly, I haven't even followed these guys. Uh, I haven't even studied it. So, uh, I don't know who. You know, I, I know it will be a good little scrap, though. You know what I mean? Because it's okay, a little well, local I'm, rivalry. I'm, well, I've done my homework on this one, guys. And Dylan White gives Derek Chisora a boxing lesson, stops mm. him in the mid to late rounds. It looks a lot mm. like the Tyson Fury fight. Mm. You, can, you can take that to the bank, guys. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe even remember. <laughs> I mean, Chisora is a guy who's going to follow you around, cut off the ring, close the distance, and he's eventually going to work his way inside, but he's going to take too much punishment on the way, especially oh. now where he's shown remnants of being a, a shop-worn fighter. He's slowed a bit. He doesn't take punches nearly as well as he did back when he fought Vitaly Klitschko, back when oh. he fought um, Tyson Fury the first time. He's older. 
He's gotten more beat. I mean, he's just a beat up fighter. To be honest with you, I'll be very surprised if Derek Chisora finishes this, finishes this fight um, at the final bell, right? I, I'll I'll be very very surprised if I see Derek Chisora make it to the final bell. I thank you so much, guys. Huge thank you to the insight and the expertise of our very good friend. Uh, three-decade fight trainer, the one and only Mr. James Gogi. And guys, don't forget, you've been listening to World Week Radio on YouTube. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to World Week Radio on YouTube.